All right, last example of these that we're going to try to look at. Uh, again, we're going to try to find all the zeros. So first thing we're going to lean on is the possible rational zero theorem. And again, the reason we do this is, you know, we can lean very heavily on our uh, graphing utility, but this kind of gives us an easy way to figure out if we're on the right track because a lot of times students can type things incorrectly into the calculator and therefore it's really going to kind of mess them up. So uh, possible rational zeros, we get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, uh, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 1 half. Uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, so we don't need to put those. So uh, that gives us an idea. As you can see, we're going to have six different integers and two fractions. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph it. So you can see I've typed this in our calculator, and we're going to hit the graph button. Now, this one's going to be a little tougher for sure, because as you can see, or hopefully you can see by the graph, it doesn't really look like it crosses any of the integers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go second graph, and look at our table just to make sure. So in between negative 2 and negative 1 you should see there's a sign change and that's going to tell us that there's a 0. There's one between negative 1 and 0 and if you look there's one between 2 and 3. So what we can do is we can make our calculator do a little bit more of the leg work for us. So we're going to hit second trace and what we're going to try to do is calculate a 0. Now it's going to ask us a series of questions. It's going to ask us for left bound, right bound, and then guess. Well, we guess if there's, we think there's more than one zero in between the two integers that we pick. What I'm going to do is left bound. I'm going to try to find this zero furthest to the left right here. So I'm just going to pick two integers that I know that's going to be between. So I'll say negative two, and I'll use that as my left bound. My right bound, I'm going to say my right bound is going to be negative one. Now, as you can see, they've drawn two little lines there in between, and it shows that these are the two uh, values you're trying to calculate a zero between. Well, I don't really need to guess because I only think there's one zero in between. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see, that doesn't look like a rational zero to me. We get not only a negative, but a huge decimal there. And uh, it doesn't look too pretty. Remember, rational numbers, the decimals have to terminate or repeat. And in this example, it doesn't look like it's doing either. They only show a certain number of digits, so you may think it ends, but it doesn't. And then the y value, you can see, is 1 e to the negative 12th. That's basically the same thing as zero. Unfortunately, the calculator doesn't always put zero there. So we're going to move on and we're going to try another one. So I'll go second calculate. I'll go down to the zero. And this time I'm going to try the middle zero. So I'll try this one right here. Well, actually, I'll move around. I'll try this one. So I'm going to try two as my left bound. I'm going to try three as my right bound. And as you can see, there's only one zero in between those two. So next, what I'll do to guess, I just can hit enter and it will give me that one. And as you can see, this time it does have y to be zero, but over here you still get a number that doesn't repeat and doesn't terminate in terms of its decimal. So I'll go by and actually calculate the one that I think that works. So this time I'll say negative one is my right bound. I'll use zero as my left bound. And there's only one zero in between, so I don't need to guess. I'll just hit enter, and it's gonna give me that zero. And as you can see, that's what we're looking for. Because what it does, it gives us negative decimal five. Now, of course, that matches up right here because we know that negative one-half is a zero. So negative one-half, and what I'll do is I'll do a little synthetic division. So I'll say two, negative one. Remember to hold place value in any of your problems if you're missing any zeros. So I'll bring this down. Anything, multiply, anything below the line gets multiplied, but what's in the box? Add those together. Multiply. Add. Uh, I may have done something wrong here. 2, negative 1. Add that, add those together. Multiply. Oh, yeah, that's my problem. <laughs> Sometimes you got to step away from your problem to see what you did there. Half of 2 is 1, and then a negative times a negative is a positive. So this gives us negative 8, and then multiply it, and it gives us positive 4. So as you can see, that is our zero because we got no remainder. So our polynomial that's left is going to be 2x squared minus 2x minus 8. So what we need to do now is find the zeros from that polynomial. Uh, they, do, they are going to be real because, as we can see, they did cross the x-axis. 
So I'm going to divide each of these by 2. I always like working with smaller numbers. So anytime I can see a common factor, I'm going to try to use that and make my number smaller. I don't know why I put a 1 there. Probably because it's like 6.45 in the morning. Anyway, uh, we get this. Now, normally I would complete the square, but I don't really want to work with fractions. So I'm actually going to use the quadratic formula this time. So what I'll do is I'll come in and say negative B, 1, plus or minus the square root. B squared, well, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 4 times A times C over 2 times A. So once I do this, a couple things. I know my radicand better be positive. Uh, the discriminant, when we talked about the discriminant, that better be the case. So when I multiply these two numbers together, I get negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So when I add them to 1, it's going to be 17. So when I do this, I'll get 1 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. If I could simplify my radical, I would do that, but 17 is not a perfect square, and there aren't any perfect squares that go into 17, and therefore I can't simplify my fraction. So my zeros are going to be this negative 1 half, and then I'll get two rational, irrational zeros from using my quadratic formula.